Hello, in the game fans. Please join me in congratulating the indie developers who released games in March, since this was one of the best months of releases in recent memory, so a huge thank you goes out to the hardworking developers, where as always, let's take a look at the best indie games of the month. Let's begin with Midnight Ghost Hunt, an asymmetric 4v4 multiplayer title that essentially pits Ghostbusters against spirits, being a chaotic, fun time worth a play. The ghost hunters need to hunt down the ghosts, while the ghosts themselves have to hold out until midnight, which is when the tables are turned, leading to a fun back and forth title that varies in pacing and speed. This is essentially prop hunt but on a new level, so I'm excited to see where early access takes this game. Hello human, you are a snail, and I am a god, capable of predicting every move you will make. Ah, too easy. I'm constantly calculating where I think you'll go next. Every laser beam I place in your way has been carefully thought about. That was step number 10 in this level. Come on, let's add another zero to this number. Ever asked yourself why you're here? I can simulate entire universes, millions of them in fact. Your houses will burn to ashes, and my drones will fill the sky with your screams. A tiny snail like you can't stop me. You will snail. I think that in the indie space, there's always space for precision or difficult platformers done well, where Will You Snail is the shining example of that. It is an unfair platformer, so think of I wanna be the guy, but where the hazards are spawned in real time and you have an idea of what to expect, where I'm pretty impressed with the AI generation in this game. The antagonistic AI has some GLaDOS vibes in terms of writing and tone, making this quite the complete package for anyone that loves challenging platformers. I was expecting the Planet Crafter to do pretty well based on the reception to its prologue demo and the developers did not disappoint with the early access release so far. It has you finding a way to survive and to terraform a hostile alien planet, having to turn it from dry, dusty and barren into paradise on planet. At least for now, there are no hostile alien threats which makes it rather chill and is a nice distinction from the arcs and rusts of the world, making it another early access title with a tremendous amount of potential. One of my favourite underrated indie games is Far Lone Sales, where the developers are back with the sequel Far Changing Tides. As mentioned in my recent video on upcoming indie game sequels, link in the top right, these are tricky things to get right since they do often end up becoming more of the same, which unfortunately is the case here. That being said, I do still think that this game is fantastic as an atmospheric game about traversing and journeying through this desolate world where it gets 5 stars for the atmosphere alone and is still a title that I would recommend.
On paper, the most successful in the game of the month is Core Keeper, a mining sandbox title that looks to be combining Terraria with Stardew Valley in very broad strokes, managing to nail that balance while keeping things interesting to become very popular indeed. As with many survival crafting titles, you know the drill, explore and mine resources, bring it back to your base to craft upgrades and equipment of increasingly more powerful tiers, venture out further, fight bosses and enemies and so on and so forth. Where interestingly, there is a farming and cooking element as well despite being set underground. Right out of the gate, the developer has included multiplayer support for up to 8 players, which I suspect is one of the main reasons why this is so popular, so let's see where Early Access takes this game. Of course, Have a Nice Death will make a list like this since it is a fantastic roguelite platformer that is not to be missed. You play as the Grim Reaper, having to take matters into your own hands and disciplining your employees who have gone on a rampage. The art and animation is top-notch, which was a given since it comes to us from Magic Design Studios, who made the very pretty, unruly heroes as well. However, there isn't much variety and even run-to-run -run progression, which is weird given current genre norms. However, it is an early access title which means plenty of room for change, where if the proper tweaks are made and more content is added, could end up being one of the greats. While puzzle games are usually for quite a niche audience, ever so often there will be one that manages to get some traction, and such is the case with Patrick's Parabox. Mechanically, this is a Sukuban style block pushing puzzle game which is nothing new, but the way it gets very interesting is that it is a recursive title where the blocks that you push around are mini levels in themselves. As with all good puzzle games, this starts off relatively simple and then gets mind-bendingly difficult, making it a cannot miss. Let's kick off the top 3 with Heroes Hour, an awesome pixel art title that is the indie game's spiritual successor to one of my favourite series of all time in Heroes of Might and Magic. It is a turn-based strategy title where you're exploring the world with your hero avatar, battling enemies, getting resources and so on with a home castle or base to build out and expand in order to get more units. Combat, as compared to Heroes of Might and Magic, is in real time with all units on screen which is impressive, making it one of my favourites of the year so far. The very long in development monster taming RPG Koromon finally made it to release where I first came across this game in 2018 and its release date was pushed to 2019, 2020, 2021 and thankfully finally released in 2022. It is essentially in the high-bit pixel art Pokemon with all the expected bells and whistles that come along with it, including shiny hunting and even a built-in Nuzlocke mood.
combat however is not PP based but uses a stamina system like Temtem which does give it more strategic depth where, dare I say it, it might be outdoing mainline Pokemon in some areas earning a well deserved spot on the list. The other long in development title that finally released is Tuning and I'm so happy to report that it does not disappoint and even better than that, far exceeds my expectations where I think that this is truly something special. I was expecting Zelda like a fox and that it would be, quote unquote, just another 2D Zelda inspired indie game but I can see why this game took that much time to make with combat, attention to detail and secrets being the highlights. The in-game mano is ingenious and gorgeous where due to the wordless nature of the game does lead to you having to figure things out for yourself which is something that I love but can see people hating as well but trust me, you're going to want to get this one taking the number one spot. For more Zelda style action adventure games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.